Hey guys, today we're going to install a Meraki MG21 cellular gateway. So as you can see here, we got the gateway itself. The SIM card, PoE, Ethernet connections, AC adapter, all of that can go in here. And then when you shut it, it's a waterproof housing for either indoor or outdoor use. And underneath, we have the mounting equipment here. So we have a template. So you can put that on the wall or the ceiling, get your screw holes. You got the actual mount itself. And then you have four mounting screws with anchors if you need them for drywall or sheetrock. And then you have a security screw, which we'll take advantage of out here. So I'll show you in a second where it's going. It's going to be an outdoor install, so just to make sure nobody walks off with it, or at least lessen the chances. So here on the side of the house, we have an old exterior Wi-Fi antenna that goes down into the DMARC room down in our basement, and that's where the Meraki um, MX68CW is located today. The cell coverage isn't great, as you might imagine, down in the basement. It has fixed antennas, so you, for, unfortunately I couldn't use like a, a setup like this with an external antenna. Um, this was from an old Fortinet installation, so I could have Wi-Fi outside in the yard. But um, now we're going to just get rid of this completely. I'm going to reuse this mount. And I'm going to take this and move it. Um, I'm going to try to get at least 8 foot, maybe 10 foot up the side of the house just to make sure it's up and out of the way. Um, higher you get it, the better the cell coverage, of course, but also just to keep people from messing with it. If, it's, if they need a ladder, there's less chance they're gonna mess with it, of course. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing is to take this off the wall and move this mount up. Just a quick check in here. Got the uh, old Wi-Fi antenna off the wall. See here, I haven't cleaned it up yet. But, uh, get this cleaned up, plug the holes. Uh, you can see I got the, the antenna wire out of the house there. Everything is clean, ready to go, run the ethernet cable. And then I was able to reuse the mount and the mount and the MG21 mount are all connected to the side of the house. Everything's all ready to go. Just need some caulk when I'm all finished. I'll just caulk around the the edges there make sure no water gets behind it but other than that ready to go running the ethernet cable now so a quick check here i got the mg21 got the ethernet cable run up from the basement i'm going to make sure you push this in here nice watertight seal with the gasket when you close this you can see this other part of the rubber will push down onto the cable make a nice seal and you want to make sure that this gasket stays flat when you reinstall it and make sure to tighten the screws, of course. Not too too tight, but just uh, nice and snug. Make a nice watertight seal there. So we got the Ethernet cable, the end crimped on it, put it plugged into the PoE port. We got the SIM card ready to go. So we're just gonna seal this up, put it on the side of the house, and then we'll start working on the wiring down in the basement. That in place. And then one other thing I wanted to point out is down here at the bottom, where it goes into the house. You can see what the previous cable installer did. Um, they didn't leave any slack here, so it just goes right into the house. And what happens is the surface tension of the water, when it rains, will come right down the cable, and then it'll go right along here and just sit where this caulk is. So we're gonna go ahead and seal this up nice and tight. Unfortunately, there's no slack here, so I can't pull these back or anything. But what, what you really like to do here is when you run your cables down from a high place like that, or anywhere outside really, you want it to loop down before it goes back up into the house. So this way the surface tension of the water will bring it down and it'll fall onto the ground right here. You can see I did this with this other coax cable that I ran to the back deck. It comes out from the basement and loops down before it goes along 
So any water that gets on it, it's going to fall off and not collect here. So just a nice little tip. Um, sometimes what I like to do is if it's kind of tight, I'll put a, a cable tie or some type of wrap right here. The cable tie works good because then the water will come down and hit that and then it'll for sure drip down once it hits it. It'll go to the lowest point so it'll go right down the cable tie no problems but since this is a nice arc you might not be able to see it in the video here this is a pretty nice arc so it'll fall before it has a chance to go back up in here. We're of course going to seal this just to keep critters and any moisture or snow or anything that might get down back here but um, it shouldn't be a big deal because the water, like I said, the water's going to drip right off here. So here we have the MG21 mounted on the side of the house. It's about 11 foot off the ground. Little chance of anybody messing with it. Just in case we put the security screw in here. With the security screw in, you can't push the button to unlock this to swivel it and take it off the mount. So it's on there pretty good. Um, not going to get it off unless you yank it, of course. but. Being 11 foot off the ground, I don't think anybody's going to mess with it. So now we're just going to do some cable management, tie this up, run it down these existing wires. Okay, we have the MG21 permanently mounted the side of the house now. We have the siding mount we saw earlier, and then the actual MG21 mount. And when I screwed the mount through this other mount, it sandwiched it in there. So it's nice and firm, it's not going anywhere. And then what I do is I run caulk along the top and the sides to keep any moisture out from behind this mount. And then I don't put any caulk at the bottom, just so any moisture or humidity that gets in there can come out the bottom if need be. And then another thing is you see this loop that you saw down below that I showed you earlier. This keeps any water from pooling by the gasket. So any water that hits the Meraki or comes down this other unrelated coax cable We'll just fall to the lowest point and drop along the side of the house. It won't pool here. That's especially important here in the Northeast where if there's any water that pools here, like if you were to do a hard L and maybe you wanted to make the cable look a little neater and tighter, but if any water sits against this gasket and then freezes, it's just a rubber gasket and you can see it's pretty big. So there's, if any water gets in there and freezes, you're going to have problems. So this just keeps the water away from that gasket altogether. And then one other thing we did is we put cable clamps on this, again, an unrelated coax cable, just to keep it from blowing in the wind too much and pulling on the ethernet cable. And one thing to note with the MD21 is once it's configured, you have your license installed, it's all ready to go, you want to look for a purple LED. So purple means it's connected, licensed, configured, downloaded the latest firmware, all ready to go, and the SIM card's in it, active, and connected to the cellular nut cellular network. So that's one thing you want to look for is that purple. That's kind of unlike some of the other Meraki equipment where a lot of them don't have a purple or purple doesn't mean it's fully up and ready. It's just on this one it happens to mean that it's connected to the cellular network and fully configured. So just something you want to keep in mind. Yeah, We have the ethernet cable running in from outside down in the basement along the wall and then we have the MG21 plugged into the Cisco PoE injector into data out, power out, and then on data in, we have WAN 2 or Internet 2 on the MX68CW. And then one thing you'll want to do, if, it, if your plan's like ours, where fixed devices like the MG21, for example, don't have unlimited data like a phone would, what I did is I configured the MX to only build its VPN tunnels across WAN 1 and use WAN 1 for all traffic. Prefer this for all traffic. Only use WAN 2 if WAN 1 fails. And then it'll limit how much data utilization you have on your cellular connection on any given month. So you're pretty much just limiting it to keep alive at that point, just to make sure the cellular connection's good. And then you should be pretty good with your data utilization on a given month. It'll only be used if it really needs it. Another thing you can do is limit the throughput. So you can limit the throughput on the MX itself. You can also limit the throughput on the MG21 gateway itself. So maybe you're plugging the MG21 in gateway into something that's not easy to throttle. For example, you could configure it to throttle on the MG21 
or the MX or both. Um, in, our, in my case, I did both. I limited it to five mag per second on both. That should be more than enough for a failover scenario. If, um, if we get in a situation where we need more bandwidth, I can easily just go in there and crank it up within the MG21 or the MX device. But that way I just know that, hey, I might be chewing up more cellular data at that point. But in this case, it's just, you know, it's purely for failover, hopefully rarely used. So I just limit it to 5 meg just to kind of limit the potential for overages. So everything's good to go. We got the WAN2 configured. We got plugged into the PoE injector. We have the MG21 plugged into the PoE injector. PoE injector is green. It's got power, it's plugged into the UPS. And then as we saw earlier, the MG21 itself has a purple LED on it, which means it's connected to the cellular network, configured and ready to go. And then one other thing I did is on the MX68CW, it has built-in Wi-Fi, but it was kind of useless for me because you can't integrate the SSIDs within this with real Meraki access points. So we have three Meraki access points around the house and this was kind of useless because like I said, it couldn't be integrated. So what I did is I configured a management SSID on here, just a simple VLAN, separate VLAN with management SSID and then um, down here, you'll see this smart outlet. It's just a cheap outlet. It usually comes in a two pack for like 20 bucks at Home Depot or any of those kind of stores. Um, and then, so this is connected to the management SSID through Wi-Fi. And then this comes with a nice easy to use app on my phone. And let's say the cable modem dies. So this is the cable modem power outlet here. If we have an issue with broadband and the Meraki fails over to cellular backup, I can just quickly go on my phone, turn the power off to the cable modem, and then turn the power back on and just reboot the cable modem, see if maybe that restores the broadband. Um, you know, if, if that doesn't work, then of course I'd call the cable company, but this is cheap and easy to set up. Um, gives you a quick way to reboot the cable modem without calling anybody first. So. Yep, there we go. We got the MX68 CW configured. We have the PoE injector plugged in. And as we already mentioned, the MG21's already up and running. It's got a purple LED. Everything is good to go. I already tested the failover by pulling the power on the cable modem, which automatically made everything fail over to WAN2. So I know we're all good to go. Thanks for watching.